This is our fifth session on Galatians 6, 14 to 18. And if I count right, it's our 104th session on the book of Galatians. And I think it's our last. This will be a sad farewell. <laughs> what a great and glorious depiction of Christ and his grace over against trying to get ourselves right with God in our own strength by law-keeping. How precious is the doctrine, the truth, the reality of justification by faith and spirit-empowered life by faith. So we come now to verses 17 and 18. From now on, let no one cause me trouble. And the word trouble there could be translated pains or blows. Let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. Father, help us to both feel and understand what Paul is feeling and saying here to us. And grant us to walk away from this book in the power of grace, in the glory of grace, in the sweetness of grace. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I bear on my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. What does he mean by that? I think we can see what he means in a passage like this, and it's not the only one. I have endured far greater labors, and that's the word used, by the way, in our passage for troubles, so it's linked up with these other persecutions, far greater labors, far more imprisonments, countless beatings. Think of it, so many beatings with rods that he couldn't remember how many. I tell you, if I got beaten once in my life, it'd be the, the center of a biography, right? <laughs> we have it so easy. Some of us, anyway. Countless beatings, often near death. Five times, this is the most amazing one of all, I received at the hands of the Jews 40 lashes less one. So five times 39, five times nine is 45, 45, carry the four, 19, 195 lashes. Can you imagine what his back looked like? I bear in my body the marks of Jesus right there. Three times I was beaten with rods. I'm not sure what these beatings were then, how they differed from three times beaten with rods. Maybe this is an, another kind of pommeling with fists as he gets driven out of town. But this, these kind of beatings were so remarkable, he did remember how many times they were. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day, a drift at sea, and so on. There's so many people today who are Christians who if something hard and painful happens to them, they cry out, where are you, God? And here's Paul, <laughs> a treasured apostle of the Lord, the apple of God's eye, the most fruitful missionary perhaps that ever was, and being beaten and lashed and stoned. And instead of getting angry at his master, boasts in his weaknesses, according to Second Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. All the more gladly will I boast in my weaknesses, persecutions, hardships, he says. So there's the origin of, I bear in my body the marks of Jesus. Now, what's the point? I think the point is that in verse 17, 
he has returned to his initial concern in this letter, namely his own personal authority, his his authenticity as an apostle. Remember in chapters 1 1 through 2 10, that was the concern of the letter from over two chapters, or let's see, a, a chapter and a half, let's say, he devotes to the fact that he is a true apostle of Christ. He didn't get his message from man. He got it from the living Christ. So he's drawing attention to the fact that unlike the false teachers, remember, they don't want to be persecuted. They require circumcision only in order that they not be persecuted. And Paul is saying, on the contrary, uh, far be it from me to boast except in the very thing that brings about the persecution. So Paul is embracing the cross, embracing persecution, and I think he's drawing attention to the fact here that these marks are marks of authenticity. I really am a true apostle, which is what he was arguing for in the beginning of, of the book. Let me show you that here in Galatians 1. Am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? Hardly. He wouldn't have so many marks on his body if he were. If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. In other words, my willingness to suffer under the displeasure of man is a mark of my genuine role as a servant of Christ. For I would have you, and this four right here shows that this, is, this willingness to suffer is connected with the authenticity of his role as a spokesman for the risen Christ. For I would have you know, brothers, that the gospel that was preached by me is not man's gospel. I did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it. I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. So that claim to be an apostle is connected with his readiness and his willingness to, to suffer. Here it is again in Galatians 5.11. But if I, brothers, still preach circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been removed. In other words, my whole gospel is a gospel preached under the threat of persecution, which means I'm not trying to curry anybody's favor. I'm laying my life down for the churches because I've met Christ. He has given me this message. I think that's what's going on here in uh, verse 17. Paradoxically, he says, from now on, let no one cause me trouble. And I say it's paradoxical because I bear in my body the marks of Jesus means I choose to keep preaching the truth of justification by faith apart from works of the law, knowing it causes me trouble when I do. And that becomes the ground for why they should not trouble him. And I think the idea goes something like this. Surely, and this is his prayer and his hope anyway, having made plain the true nature of the gospel of grace and justification by faith and empowered life in the spirit by faith and how much it's costing me and how I, I, I bear in my body the marks of Jesus, surely this will cause at least many of you in the church not to be swept away in the error and thus not to multiply my troubles. So he's asking, please, embrace the true gospel message and thus become my joy and not my trouble. And then 
he ends on the note of grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. This book has been about salvation by grace through faith based on the cross of Christ. Maybe we should refer to one verse just to remind ourselves. Galatians 2.21, I do not nullify the grace of God, which is also the grace of Christ Jesus. I don't nullify the grace of God because if righteousness, if justification, if the imputation of a right standing with God, if the whole glorious purpose of this letter to help people get right with God and then walk in the power of the Spirit, if it were through the law, if law-keeping were the way into a right standing with God, Christ died to no purpose. The cross would be undone. Therefore, this entire letter, which is designed to show that Christ didn't die for no purpose, he died in order to bear our curse and to forgive our sins and to bring down the supply of the Holy Spirit, all of it received by faith. That is the grace of God. And so he says, remember that. I'm sending you away with the entire message packaged in one word, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go in grace. Go in the memory of the cross. Boast in the cross. Embrace God's way of justification and sanctification and joy and peace and love and hope. Embrace it all by faith, not by works of the law. Amen.